Okay, so we've got probably a million and a half cells in there. Uh, you can see a little pellet in the bottom. So first, just pour off the medium. You want to get all the medium off the cells. And then you want to break up that pellet. And the easiest way is to do that. And that will break up the pellet quite nicely. Okay, so we've now counted these cells. So we now know that there's a million and a half cells in there. Um, I'm going to make these up at half a million per mil. So I'm going to add three mils of the 1.2% alginate. And you can see the alginate's really th quite thick and gloopy. So add it to the cells and you've got to give those a really good mix. What you don't want to do is create air, air bubbles like I've just done. So try to avoid doing that because those air bubbles will mean that you get air bubbles within your uh, alginate beads and they will float and that will cause you a problem. So you don't want to get air bubbles even though I've just put air bubbles into them. Okay, so I've counted these cells. I know exactly how many are in there. I've got uh, a million cells in there, so I'm going to add two mils of alginate. And you can see the alginate's quite thick and gloopy. So we've got two mils of alginate added, uh, added to the cells. So I'm just going to add that gently and try not to um, cause air bubbles and also remember that the alginate will accumulate in the pipette so you've got to squirt all of that out. See that last little bit you want to get all of that into the tube otherwise your cell density will be the wrong cell density. Okay so that's the alginate added. Okay so what we're going to do now is transfer the uh, solution of cells in alginate into the calcium chloride solution. Now we've got lots of bubbles in there and that's really not going to help, um, but we, will, we might be able to get rid of those when we pipette. So I've got the P200 pipette, yellow tip, and just draw up that liquid. Okay. And all we're going to do is drop this solution into a tube of calcium chloride, about 15 mils in there is perfectly fine. And if you just drop it in, you see I'm getting rid of those air bubbles now and the calcium will polymerize that alginate and what we've now got forming in that, that tube are some spheres of alginate impregnated with cells at about half a million uh, cells per mil. So I've put 200 microliters in there and I can see 10 or so nice alginate beads in there. So I'm just going to do some more. Obviously I've got enough here to do about 50 beads from this uh, milliliter of uh, alginate and cells. Okay, what you can see here is that the cells have still got a bit of residual pink DME and medium in them and you can see the alginate beads floating around. I rushed it a bit and I've got a few big ones in there that have all stuck together but plenty of nice round little alginate beads and that's what you want to see. Okay so our alginate beads have now incubated in calcium for about five minutes. What we need to do now is separate them from the calcium and wash them in sodium chloride. So the easiest way to do this is to use one of these cell strainers. Now this is where there's a good chance you could contaminate your cells. So have gloves that have been sterilized, put the insert in a 50 mil falcon, give your cells or your beads a bit of a swirl and pour them into the filter and they should, they will filter that out. Now what's happened there is a bit of vacuum has formed or pressure difference has formed so you just need to lift that up and the liquid will drain away. and you've got a filter that is now full of alginate beads. So let as much of that get off of the um, filter as possible and then carefully, without touching the filter at all, transfer them 
into a tube of sodium chloride. Okay, so those are now in sodium chloride. It's not PBS. If you put them into PBS, then what will happen is there's still some phosphate in there, and then when you combine it with the calcium that you're trying to wash out, you'll get cloudy beads and you won't be able to see what's going on. I've got our, um, the, the initial batch that I did with the large beads in sodium fluoride, they've been washed. Um, what we've now got to do is strain them again. So they've been washed for about five minutes in sodium fluoride. You can repeat this process twice. If you find that your beads go cloudy, repeat this process twice. So again, we're going to do the same thing. It's actually a good idea to lift the strainer out of the um, falcon tube, pour them in, and then the liquid will run straight through. Okay, so there you've got your beads in the sodium chloride. And again, what we're going to do is, sense, sense, the most sensible thing is then just put them back into the tube where they came from, like that. Give them a tap to get them out. And you've now got your alginate beads in uh, the tube. Now, all we have to do now is to top this tube up with liquid medium and transfer them into a T25. Okay, so I've just topped up these beads with some uh, medium for the cells, for the PC3 cells. You can see the beads are floating around in there and I'm just gonna transfer those into a T25 flask for growing. Now when we grow these it's a good idea to have more medium than I've put in there, maybe 20 mils of medium and store them in the incubator upright like that. If, if you store them flat the beads tend to stick to the plastic, well not so much stick but they maybe they tend to dry out a little bit. So have 20 mils of medium and store your flasks upright. Okay, one of the big problems that students have is how to transfer these alginate beads from one well to another. So if you want to put a few alginate beads into a well of a 24 well plate, one of the easiest things to do is take a sterile uh, pasteur like this, cut off the end with a sterile pair of scissors, and then to make a large bore, and then you can go in there and suck up a small amount of liquid, and in there I can see I've got one, two, three, for five alginate beads in there. So you can, having something like a, a Pasteur pipette with a, the end cut off means you can have a large bore and that allows you to take up a few alginate beads. You can see them floating around in there and then you could just drop one into one well, one into the next well, or one into the next well of a 24 well plate. The other way of adding the cells to the calcium and that's using a hypodermic needle. So this is a bit tricky. You don't really want to inject yourself with tumor cells. However, um, I use an insulin needle because they're very fine, but you can use a 21G needle and put that onto a 1mm or a 5mm uh, syringe, which actually makes it much easier. And these are available from the technicians. So firstly, on this type, I've got to take off that cap. You wouldn't have to do that. And then I pull out the plunger because what I'm going to do is pipette my cells in alginate down the barrel of the uh, syringe and that's because you can't if you try to draw the cells up through the syringe you will kill them because it will create a vacuum so I'm just going to prepare the cells down into the barrel this can be a little bit tricky and you very rarely get a full one milliliter in there so I just put a few hundred microliters in there And then I can put my barrel in there, take off the sheath of the needle, and then basically push the alginate until it comes, just starts to extrude out of the pipette of the needle. You can see a tiny little drip of alginate there. Now this method um, gives much more even sized alginate beads. So all you do is you slowly extrude the alginate from the needle and they're giving much smaller um, alginate beads. Now what I've just realized is what's happening here is electrostatic effects are sucking the uh, droplets onto the side of the tube. 
So it's a good idea to have this right down inside the tube and then the uh, droplets will actually fall straight down into the calcium. There's a variation of this method that I sometimes do where I extrude a tiny speck of alginate from the needle and dip it into the calcium and that can give alginate beads of about 0.5 to 1 millimeter, which is what I call a micro bead uh, alginate bead experiment. So doing it this way you get many more beads per milliliter, they're much smaller and they're optically much clearer and nicer to image but you get fewer colonies. So if you want to get something like RNA from your alginate beads, probably better off with the big ones. If you want to do fine resolution imaging for apoptosis, you might be better off doing these smaller beads. Uh, so I've only done about 300 microliters of cells there. And in there, you can probably see whizzing around are a few dozen very nice, evenly sized alginate beads much much smaller than with the P200 pipette method. Okay so this is the alginate bead that we've just made uh, and this is the outline of the alginate bead. We're looking on a four times lens and on this particular microscope you can see there's a scale bar of half a millimetre so this bead is probably two or three millimetres across. These large black bits here are air bubbles which I said I'd put some air bubbles in there by mistake. Um, all of these little things down here are individual cells. So that's one cell, that's another cell, that's another cell. Now what will typically happen is a lot of these cells will die, a minority of them will form spheroids and those are the uh, spheroids that you're wanting to grow in your experiments.